The eighth lecture is Basic Needs, the Fundamentals of Good Mental Health. The title of this particular uh, teaching is on the basic needs. And the question comes, what are we talking about with uh, such a topic? It is my suggesting that we're looking at a difference in our lives between needs and wants. Our needs being factors that are essential to our living and our wants being factors from our personal desires. For example, when does a person want a drink and or when, do, uh, when does the person need a drink? The alcoholic, for example, wants a drink before starting. After starting, they need a drink. Also, the alcoholic, as we're seeing here in this series of teaching, needs to recovery, but one of the big problems is that they don't want to. Now, when we come to a list of basic needs, there are many and they are varied. Some may include as many as 14, 15, or 16 items. Sigmund Freud takes it down to one need, our sex need. For our purposes here, I will work with five basic needs, and they are physical satisfaction, emotional security, social status, achievement or mastery, and finally meaning or purpose. If we ask ourselves the question, who am I, why am I who I am? then these basic needs will help us to find the answer to these questions. Why do I get mad at the wife, the children, the boss? Why do I do the things I do, have these quirks? Why do I, made in the image of God, go back to alcohol as I do? We need to ask ourselves these questions and look at the inside parts of us. As we consider these five categories, we shall suggest ways in which these needs in the areas where they have been met or not met, and how they have affected that question, who am I? We will also see how drinking alcohol can play a role in these areas of life and can become problematic. For, uh, for all of the areas as well. The five essential needs are in the diagram before us, and we start with physical satisfaction. For the newborn infant, hunger, thirst, elimination are immediately present, and they exist lifelong. Warmth and shelter Hospitals, doctors will be required over the course of one's life. In our society, this need is taken as a given. And we do find that this need is, is fairly adequately met. People in our welfares here in the United States are, are often better off than middle class people in other areas of the world. Now, in these five areas, I am positing five themes. It would be a normal rating, a scale of a 0% to fulfillment of 100%. The personal reaction, the feeling level, could be experienced as painful, uncomfortable, comfort, or pleasure. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant drug which in the first stage of acting on the brain seems almost to be a stimulant as more freedom is present. The person taking just few drinks could be transported not just to a 100% satisfied, say in the physical realm or any of them, but to feeling 125% fulfilled. This could be experienced, as I'm suggesting, in all five of these areas. 
The first use of alcoholic beverage may have an unusual physical result for some, either negatively or positively. If it is a negative response, then their uh, future avoiding of using will be carefully monitored. One treatment center, however I know, made a major point of the positive early effect in drinking being maybe the main reason for frequent to return to using. The X factor for this person could be the fantastic pleasure experienced from the alcohol in every use. In my flow chart on alcoholism at the ac late acute phase, I begin to describe in detail what may be taking place as the later gross physical and psychological problems are present. This person, even with a fatty or a cirrhotic liver, will still reach for another drink. At this stage of addiction, the withdrawal pain and displeasure will be a cause for using. The person's attempt to drink himself back to good health but it just will not happen. Next we could look at this need for emotional security. You and I are in need of, life, of love from the beginning of life until the end of it. And this is needed for this emotional health and security. It has been truthfully determined that this is the major factor which is important in answering the question, Who am I? We need to be loved and tied to other people. There is a report from many years ago of an experiment conducted in two foundling nurseries, one in New York City and one in South America. All the babies apparently living in these situations had the same physical care for diet and diaper change and all the rest. Half of the babies, however, were held, condoled, and uh, fussed over. What was the result of this is that this particular group had fewer diseases, gained more weight, and had more resistance to mortality. Now, it doesn't mean that many of the babies that w were not given this kind of special attention were, were going to die, but it does point out that we, as, as infants, are very, very vulnerable in this area of needing love and care and support. Our ability to receive and to give love freely is tied to some of these very earliest experiences in our families or foster families. Alcohol or drugs can take care of our painful feelings of emotional rejection or lack of love. We can see how easily such a person is moved to use the chemical as often as possible to get the feeling that I love everyone and everyone thinks that I am wonderful. It can work that magic for a time, maybe even for a long time, but eventually as the addiction bites us hard with guilt and remorse and failure, the growth in pain and uncomfort begins to manifest itself. It is then that we use these painful feelings to start the using for the 125% pleasure is an ancient history. I say this is often in the talks. This could call for dealing with the second problem in attempted recovery, help in gaining emotional maturity and stability, where we are in feeling loved or not, reveals itself in the other needs areas as well. We look next at social status. We're not talking about class structure here with, uh, with this social status notion, but rather of the fact that all of us seek a standing among the people we associate with each day. We can even observe 
infant's manipulating conditions in this area. The mother wants to be accepted as mother, father as father. We have a need to be accepted by the people we work with and in our social groups. If we don't get it, it is surprising to see what we will do in an effort to obtain it. The keeping up with the Joneses factor is in play here. Remember my saying that the emotional stability can influence our other needs? What drives some people to make lots of money, to be able to buy fancy things, to live in big and expensive houses, and to give rich gifts? It can often be traced to the person not feeling loved or appreciated enough. She'll show them. Now imagine that this person was successful in doing all these things for a while, but to, due to addiction runs into more and more trouble. Hence she is unable to keep living at her desired level. She is confronted by this area of failure, and so more feeling of guilt and remorse to be dealt with by drinking. Alcoholism or drug addiction puts the entire family unit into this sad downward spiral. We look next at achievement and mastery. This need is encapsulated in the thought that each person needs to realize that he has achieved something. There's a man at Hurley Hospital buffeting the floor, yet with a feeling that he's helping people get well. This is rather wonderful and fortunate. Lots of people have this comfortable level of success without a great achievement. The person moving into alcoholism could begin the process with a comfortable level of success. Just let's say at 60% on that scale of 0 to 100. Yet once jobs are lost, time is spent in jail, finances are deeply touched, health is ignored, and one after another of family members and friends are giving up on me, it becomes harder and harder to ignore the fact. We are not being successful. Yet to hear us speak it, of it, it sounds like it's not our fault. It may even sound like this is the way I want to live. It is pretty difficult to offer help to such a person. You can clearly see that it may take that two-by-four sock between the eyes just to catch his attention and call him back to reality. In reflective moments about our life, in looking back, we ask ourselves, what have I contributed? There should be something for each of us to ponder and appreciate. And finally, there is meaning or purpose. When I think about this as a need, the book by Dr. Viktor Frankl comes to mind. The title of that book, Man's Search for Meaning. There was a phrase from his writing that I carried in my head. I thought that it went like this, you can face any how for the right why. I have now learned that Dr. Frankel was really quoting a saying of Nietzsche, he who has a why to live can bear with almost any how. Human life for all of us is full of pain and guilt and the reality of death. We can face these with confidence. We can make the great, the, each event a growth experience when we find this meaning need present in our life. A woman victim in the recent Boston bombing has lost a foot but she is a dancer, and I heard it reported that she had the desire and the express drive to dance again. 
Again, for the pre-addicted person, there can be meaning and purpose to his life. This may be the result of his Catholic upbringing or some other religious faith or some secular philosophy. Prayer, attendance at worship, meditation, volunteering, giving to the needy, fighting for social justice causes, all these could be on the plate of the addicted person's life at the beginning. But once again, the devastation of the progression of alcoholism will be evident in the bankruptcy of this basic need. Frankel reported that in scientific research that one counselor's group of alcoholics, 90% of them, those she studied, had suffered from an abysmal feeling of meaninglessness. Of the drug addicts studied by another counselor, 100% believed that things seemed meaningless. What can be the result of the loss of meaning? Death by suicide can result. The prognosis for alcohol addiction disease is three in number. Recovery, insanity, or death. The death possibility is usually premature, dying earlier than necessary due to the physical damage to the body after years of abusive drinking or drug taking linked with poor diet, accidents of all kinds, traffic and other, or even some violent act. In the, under the conditions of intoxication. And then when all these basic needs are reduced to the pain level, hurting physically, no one loving or caring for them, socially an outcast, not achieving anything anymore, and all meaning in life has fled, then the suicide thought enters the mind. Some, unfortunately, will succeed in their attempt. Some will fail in the attempt and live to be thankful that they did, for they found there was a solution to their problem, an answer to their question, a meaning to their life. Still, there are many who do get sick and tired of being sick and tired. The healing that is necessary in recovery for the addicted person will look to some improvement over a span of time in all five of these basic need areas. There is the greatest requirement of improvement in the emotional satisfaction part of life and in the meaning or purpose for their life. There are some characteristics of people with good mental health that we could consider. A move in that direction of these characteristics over the period of time of continuing sobriety must happen for the addicted person. The three of these characteristics would be these. They feel comfortable about themselves. Now this includes not being bowled over by their emotions, accepting their own shortcomings, gaining in self-respect, and being able to take life's disappointments in stride. The second aspect of these characteristics, they feel right about others. Now this includes in being able to give love, to like and trust other people, and to respect the differences they find in one another. The third aspect, they are able to meet the demands of life. And included here would be their ability to deal with situations and problems as they come, setting realistic goals for themselves, 
and learning to accept their responsibility. Some of those progressing seems like a return to normality, but for the majority of addicts it will look like a foreign land of booby traps and landmines. One of the difficulties in the area of healing in these areas of need is that a great deal of patience and perseverance is required. And these have not been virtues that have been present in the life of the addicted person. Suddenly, but they become absolutely essential. Patience and perseverance. They get frustrated easily. They get overconfidently, overconfident evenly, and so very quickly they're over uh, reaching for the drink and so the relapses into addiction may be experienced over and over again in the new learning program. They have tried every trick in the book many times over in seeking ways to use the chemical of choice in moderation and it has not worked out finally come to the point where they begin to humble self and accept help in attempting to live life day by day without any of the so-called luscious nectar, alcohol or the drug of choice. One day at a time becomes their motto and they may even let go and let God. Having lived life by their own will and messed up big time. The person may well try to see if God's will work more better in, a, in, a, in an improved way for them. The recovery can be an experience of being born again to this sober way of life. There is much relearning to be undertaken. There will be some answers to the original questions, Who am I? and why am I who I am, as in patience and perseverance, sobriety day by day, they make the progress. The serenity prayer has often been used with the addicted person. It's, a, it's very helpful to remember these words on the road to recovery. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen.